This is Lesson 11 in Module 4. In this lesson, we'll continue using the addition of adjacent angles to solve problems. In our last lesson, we looked at right angles and straight lines as benchmark angles to help us solve problems. In this lesson, we're going to add the addition of the 360 degree angle to help us solve problems. So for this one, we're going to start with a 90 degree angle, and then we're going to add an additional ray, and we're going to think of the entirety of the angles added together as a circle. So we know in this situation, the angles are going to add to 360 degrees. So we first of all know that our first angle is 90 degrees because it's a right angle. We're going to measure the other angle with a protractor and know that it's 120 degrees. And the unknown angle is the angle that's left. So as we did in the last lesson, since we have three angles here, we're first going to add together the angles that we already know, and we get a total of 210 degrees, plus x, the unknown, would be 360 degrees. So we know if we take our full 360 degree angle and we subtract out the part that we know, we're left with the part that we don't know. And therefore, 360 degrees minus 210 degrees would leave us with 150 degrees. So our unknown angle x is 150 degrees. Let's look at a different example. In this one, we're going to draw two intersecting lines. And intersecting again means that they cross each other, but they're not perpendicular because they do not cross at right angles. Now, if we measure this with a protractor, let's say we measured the first angle and we found it to be 33, 33 degrees. We know that the line we made is a straight line. So we know that the sum of these two angles would have to be 180 degrees. So 180 degrees would be 33 degrees. And we measure this one, and we see that it's 147 degrees. So these two angles together are 180 degrees. Then we measure this one and we find it's also 33 degrees. And we measure this one and we also find that it's 147 degrees. And we notice something that the angles that are opposite each other when the lines intersect are the same measurement. So the 33 degree angles and then on the opposite side the 147 degree angles. So that's another important fact that we can use to help us solve for unknown angles in a given problem. Let's look at a different one. Again, let's draw intersecting lines. And this time, we only know the measure of one angle. What can we do to find the measures of the additional angles? Well, we just found out that the opposite sides, the opposite angles formed by intersecting lines have the same measurement. So if this angle is 20 degrees, then this one also has to be 20 degrees. We know that this line forms an angle of 180 degrees. So if 180 degrees is equal to 20 degrees plus some unknown. 
So 180 degrees minus 20 degrees would be that unknown number. So 160 degrees would be the unknown angle. So this would have to be a 160 degree angle. And if that angle is 160 degrees, then this angle is also 160 degrees. Let's look at another one. Now here we're going to draw a line segment and we're going to label this one C E. And we're going to pick a point in the middle and label it e D. Then we're going to draw another line segment that intersects CE at point D. And we're going to label this one AB. Now the information we have is that angle ADC is 58 degrees. So angle A D C is 58 degrees. Then we're also going to draw an additional ray. That meets line C D uh, line segment C D. At point D. And this will be line segment D F. And we know that we're going to be told that angle F, E, D, E is equal to 75 degrees. Now we need to see if we can figure out the measures of the th other three angles. So we're going to call this first unknown angle, angle Q. So we see that C E is a straight line. So we know that 180 degrees is going to be equal to 58 degrees plus 75 degrees plus the measure of angle Q. So 58 plus 75 plus Q is going to be this full 180 degree angle. So we're going to add together the two values that we know, 58 and 75. And we see we have 133. So 80 degrees is equal to 133 degrees plus Q. So 180 degrees subtracting out the part we know, 133 degrees, would be equal to 47. So the unknown angle Q is 47 degrees. So this would be 47 degrees. All right, we have two more angles to find. This angle here, EDB, is directly across from angle A, D, C. So we know opposite angles have the same measurement. So this would have to be 58 degrees. Again, we know that C, E is a straight line. So we know that this complete angle would have to be 180 degrees. So 180 degrees would be equal to 58 degrees plus an unknown angle, let's call it N. This is our angle N. So 180 degrees minus 58 degrees is equal to N. So 122 degrees would be equal to N. So we can find out using what we know about opposite angles, what we know about degrees in a straight line, degrees in a full circle, and degrees in a right angle to solve for unknown angles. 
and let's do that in our problem set. So for number one, pause the video and try number one. So for this one, we're looking for the unknown angle D. So we know the full circle measures 360 degrees. So D plus the 20 degrees that we know is going to be equal to 360. Therefore, D has to be equal to 140. Try number two. So here we're told that one of the angles is 90 degrees, indicated by the little box in the corner, is equal to angle C. So we know from our benchmarks that 90 plus 270 would be a full circle. Okay, stop the video and try number three. So for number three, <coughs> For three, we know one angle is 74 degrees. We're told that another angle is a right angle. Then we have an unknown angle E. We know the sum of those angles is going to be 360. So if we add these two together, we get 164. And 360 minus 164 would leave us, leave us with 196, which is the value of E. Pause the video and try four. For four, there's actually a mistake in the labeling of this. This obviously is more than a 60 degree angle. This should be 160 degrees. Try that one again. Okay, so here we have a 90 degree angle that we're shown by the square in the corner plus 160 degrees plus an unknown angle F has to total to 360 degrees. So if we add these two together, we get 250. So our unknown angle F would have to be 110. Okay, try number five. So this one we're told that O is at the intersection of A, B, and C, D. We know two of the angles. Angle D, O, A is 160 degrees, and A, O, C is 20 degrees. So based on what we know about intersecting lines and the angles they form, we know if this side is 20 degrees, Y also has to be 20 degrees. And we know if this is 160 degrees, then X has to also be 160 degrees. Plus we know that 60 degrees plus 20 degrees would give us 180 degrees because AB is a straight line. Okay, pause the video and try number six. For this one, we know that O is at the intersection of RS and TV, and we know one angle, TOS, is 125. So given that, we know that this full angle would be 180, would be equal to 125 degrees, plus unknown angle I. Therefore, Angle I has to be equal to 55 degrees. So if I is 55 degrees, then G has to be 55 degrees. And if this angle is 125, then angle H has to also be 125. Okay, pause the video and try seven. So here we see, we're told that O is the intersection of WX, 
of YZ and of UO. The only angle we know is XOZ, which is 36 degrees. Again, given what we know about opposite angles, if this angle is 36 degrees, then K is also 36 degrees. And we know that these two angles together have to form 180 degrees. So 180 degrees would be 36 degrees plus N. Therefore, 180 degrees minus 36 degrees would be the measure of angle N, which would be 144 degrees. Then also, these angles together are going to form 180 degrees. We know that angle K is 36. We know we also have right here a right angle plus angle M. So if we add these two together and subtract from 180, we find that angle M has to be equal to 54 degrees. And that concludes lesson 11.